Have you heard about the Redstone rocket? Well, I'm going to show you the Redstone missile, which started it all. Hey, I'm John Williams, and I'm at the Udvar Hazy Air and Space Museum in Chantilly, Virginia. And I'm standing next to the Redstone missile. Now, if you know anything about space, you've heard of the term Redstone. That is because the Redstone was the foundation of America's early spaceflight program. So the Redstone rocket actually launched our first satellite, Explorer 1, and our first astronaut, Alan Shepard, into space. So the Redstone missile was developed in the 1950s for the U.S. military, specifically the U.S. Army. And it was the first U.S. large-scale liquid-fueled missile to become operational. It had a range of around 250 miles and was propelled by liquid oxygen and alcohol. Now this rocket was also the direct descendant of the V-2 rocket and it was developed by Werner von Braun and other German engineers who literally developed the V-2 rocket. So we got the best help we could. And also, um, this rocket, you can actually tell what type of rocket it is because you look under there you can see those red jet veins right there if you see those on a rocket you know it's a redstone which is super cool and then you can see right here the engine which was the redstone engine and this was literally the first mass-produced liquid fueled engine in the u.s now this engine was also the precursor to many famous engines i'm sure you've heard of like the space shuttle main engine really cool and if you look up just a little bit you can see the liquid oxygen fuel tank and if you look up even higher you can see the alcohol fuel tank super cool and now i'm going to take you up to the top of the rocket to show you where the warhead was held and what's cool up there now i'm halfway up the redstone missile and if you look up just a bit to the top of the missile, you can see where there would have been a nuclear or conventional warhead placed there by the U.S. Army. So when NASA acquired these rockets, they modified them. That included taking all of the rocket from those fins, as you can see right there, taking all of the rocket above those fins off and replacing that area with an extended version of this rocket where they would have extended the fuel tanks by six to eight feet so they could have a greater range. And then they would have put on the top the Explorer 1 spinning stage, which would have taken Explorer 1 to orbit. And then they would have either added Alan Shepard's capsule, which is when he went into space and on a suborbital trajectory. And Gus Grissom actually um, was the second astronaut to also take this rocket. So after we had done those two missions that were manned we had switched to the atlas rocket which was actually able to take a human to orbit which is really cool so you can tell that the rocket is um nasa because it's called a rocket but when it's the u.s army it's called a missile pretty cool and this is why it's so important to know what a redstone rocket is because the redstone was the pioneering part of our early space program it was so important and i'm so happy i could share it with you today so please subscribe and check out my next video. Have a good day. Our mission is to make you space intelligent.